Hello everyone, my name is Loon, and welcome to this recorded talk about procedural art for indies. This presentation was first shown at GDC 2017 at the Side Effects booth, so let's begin. On this video, I want to show you the art pipeline used in Suki and the Shadow Cloud, which is a 3D adventure platformer. The team is very small, it is only one developer and one composer. The game is currently in development for PS4, PS Vita, Xbox One, and PC. And basically, the game is on its third and last iteration, as you can see in this image. First, I want to show you some of the results using this workflow. So to achieve this art, this is, uh, these are the steps I follow. So basically, I begin with a base mesh uh, on 3ds Max, which is basically a low poly mesh that follows only the silhouette of the object I want to create. Then I send that base mesh to ZBrush so I can start sculpting some of the details. Uh, sometimes I need a retopology and a new UV set. That happens mostly with characters. Uh, then when I have the, the high polygon mesh and the low poly mesh, I do it. I make the texture baking using X normal. And then I work on the final texture details using 3D code. And after the base models are complete, then I jump straight into Houdini to create the procedural asset. Uh, why do we need procedural assets for our game? Uh, we can begin that it is a huge time saver. It is a perfect way to standardize your game assets. Basically, you only have to work on every asset just once, and then you can get endless variations from it. Uh, it is also like having your very own level editor. And procedural, it is not, I mean, procedural does not mean are uh, just random, randomly generated worlds. Uh, it, is, it is much, much more on this case. So now let me show you some of the procedural assets made for Suki and the Shadow Claw. Uh, so for this demo, I want to show you a bridge I am using a lot on Suki and the Shadow Claw. And the interesting thing about this asset is that I have some parameters that help me to make variations quick, quickly of this asset. So here I have some random rotation slider, which basically helps me to set up uh, to randomly rotate the, the wood planks for the bridge or kept them straight. I also have a length value, which basically sets how often are the god planks going to be repeated. Uh, I also have a, a gravity modifier, which sets up the, br the bridge straight or, or adds like a gravity curve. And I also have like a broken uh, effect. And basically it is to add a, as a hole in the bridge where the player has to jump on. But that's not that. I, I also have a, a curve that that the developer just can, can modify and it basically can set how long the bridge is and you can see how everything is going to be set. Uh, so the way this asset work is actually very simple. Uh, everything begins uh, here with a, with a line. Basically, it's a, a simple curve with only two points. I am using one for the end and one for the, for the start. Uh, I also imported uh, the, the low poly models that I made uh, outside Houdini. And basically what I am doing is that I am just copying these pieces over the different curves uh, I will be creating here. So let's go back to the, to the line. You can see once again, it only has two points. The next step here will be like to add uh, some subdivisions. So I am adding a new vertex every certain distance. And after this, after I have like enough subdivisions, then I can just curve the, the line, which I only use it uh, as, in, as in formula over the y-axis just to, to add some of the curve for that, for this line. Uh, basically, when I get the shape that I want here, I am just copying every, a new plank on every point. Uh, you can see how every point is copying a different plank. I have three versions of it. So this is uh, a step one for the for the bridge. Uh, so the next part will be uh, I am going to to go back to the to the curve line, which is the base for this for this for this asset. 
And basically, I just gave it some some thickness, so I kind of start using this as a as a rope. And I used some of the Houdini tricks. Uh, so basically, I have three different transform modes, and I placed them on slightly different positions, and then I merged uh, these three positions into a single model. And I am using this as one of the sides for the for the bridge. Then also I am just I just got a, another model which is like a another rope that ties everything together. I also uh, placed these models uh, using the the ori original curve for the bridge. The, uh, and when I merge them, I have this this asset which is one side of the bridge, and then I can just mirror this mesh and I have the sides of the bridge which this makes a, a step two and for the final step for the model once again I am going to come back to my to my original curve but in this case what what I will be doing is that I am going to be deleting uh, only the points on the middle once again and I am going to to get this uh, wood uh, wood post model I am just going to, to mirror it uh, in the origin and then I am going to copy this mirrored model into every point of the curve and it is going to give me this result so with this uh, this is the third part of the model and basically when I merge th those three parts together here I have the, the final bridge model complete uh, however, this is not a fully functional game model yet. Uh, with Houdini, I can also start creating once again with the same curve as a, as a base. Uh, I can also start creating the uh, low poly collision mesh for this bridge. So basically, yeah, once again, I, I took the same curve. I deleted uh, some of the points to have a, a lower uh, polygon mesh. And I am using this uh, for the for the collision, along with the sides of the bridge, which are generated in a very similar way. And then basically we can merge everything together, and you can see how I have a a low polygon mesh uh, with the same high polygon mesh in in one model. And then I can just uh, add different behaviors right into my game engine. Uh, so now let's go. Let's come here to Unity, which is my the game engine I am using. And you can see how I have here the uh, same uh, procedural model that I showed you before in Houdini. However, thanks to the Houdini Engine plugin for Unity, I can just select this model. And you can see how I have the same values exposed uh, right into my, my game engine. So I am going to, to wake up this asset. And you can see how I have, once again, the same parameters. And I can modify this game asset right into my my game engine and get some of the results from Houdini right in there right in my, into my game engine and the model is going to behave exactly the same that I did in rightly into Houdini so I can modify the length of the planks once again I can modify the the gravity of the bridge or I can even modify the 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 whole parameters for the bridge and this is right into my my game engine which means I can start uh, play testing immediately. Uh, so right now I am going to make this bridge uh, uh, impossible for the for the player, but this is only for for testing purposes. You can see how I have this uh, very big hole in here. Uh, I am going to to play test it uh, immediately, and you can see how everything is working perfectly. Uh, directly into, into the game engine. So I have the collisions on the sides. I have the collisions for the for the wood planks uh, on the floor of the bridge. Uh, also the hole, uh, of course, has a hole in the in the collision where the player can can fall. And and this part is actually very obvious that the player cannot make it to the end. So I am going to, to try to jump. Of course, the uh, the jump is going to fail. But then I can stop uh, the game, go come back to the to my same view, and I can start just tweaking the the hole of the bridge, just to make sure that the player can can cross it. And uh, the the awesome part about this is that you can see 
that I am not worrying at all about the about the art or, or about the collision being misplaced. The only thing I am worrying about this asset is that it is a uh, fun for the player and 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 it is basically and that the player can jump through the bridge. So I just hit play once again. And you can see how once again I can test this model uh, immediately. So uh, I this time I am sure that the the player can pass through, through the bridge. And that's it. I mean, I can create a lot of different varia variations for for this bridge uh, immediately. And I am sure that you can start seeing how this uh, this workflow uh, can save you a huge amount of time. Uh, however, uh, bridges are not the only thing, the only kind of models that you can make. So this is a procedural model. Uh, here are the the wood fences for the for these islands are also uh, Houdini procedural models. I am going to to make them live, and you can see how here I also have a a curve to to modify how this asset is being placed. So we are, once again you can you can start modifying this uh, right into your game engine. Uh, yeah, I mean once again it is repeating the same. The only thing you have to worry about is about making your level fun. You can see how it also has the the low polygon collision mesh in here. Uh, these these islands are also uh, procedural models with the same approach. And uh, you can see I have the the curve for the edges, and I can just modify this curve, and and I can just start uh, working on a new island shape. Uh, the asset is getting dark because I need to to bake the, the light maps once again. I mean, this is unexpected behavior, but you can make uh, pretty much any procedural asset that your game needs, uh, regardless the art style of or uh, level of realism that you require. Uh, so thank you for much. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, my name is Loon. Uh, I am the developer of Suki and the Shadow Cloud. Uh, I hope this video uh, can help you to make a better art assets for your game. Um, and good luck. Thank you.